Kadisha. Kadisha. <laughs> I didn't know I was mutilated as a baby until I was 15. My clitoris was cut off when I was a week old, and this is something that happens to nearly all the girls in the Gambia. It's called female genital mutilation. When I was 15, I was brought to America to marry an older man. When he tried to have sex with me, that's when I realized what female genital mutilation was, and that's when my horror started. When Khadija was born, I knew that I could never let this happen to her. I knew that I had to do something to stop it. Most of the girls and women you see on the streets have been cut. Their clitoris was cut off or worse. This has been going on for thousands of years. I've come home to try and do something to end it. Even if that means taking on my family, my tribe, and the whole of Gambia. So what do you guys think about when it comes to the issue of FGM? But we should not stop it. Okay. You don't think we should stop FGM? No, we, we, should, we shouldn't stop it. Do you want your wife to not have any desire or you want her to fully enjoy what you're enjoying? The circumcision normally came in to stop that too much of feeling the woman is having. It's natural. God gave it to her. Why stop it? I don't need to cut my daughter's body parts to make her, you know, stay calm, to make her stay a virgin. No, you need to protect your daughters. Don't mutilate them. It's not helping them. Like, I've been through it. It didn't help me. This is the house I grew up in. We lived in one apartment with my mom, and then my stepmom lived in the other apartment. My family in the Gambia, we are Sarahulais. When I was growing up, my dad had three wives, and he has a lot of kids. You know, the number of siblings I have, I think at least 30 of us. The youngest ones, I really can't name. I had to call them and be like, who's your mom? So it's like, I mean, I have a lot of siblings. This is where the mosque begins at. My father is an imam, and he built the mosque behind our family home. He boasts when it comes to his kids, especially his daughters. None of them dishonored him by getting pregnant before marriage. All of them were virgins. The fact that my dad had other wives and other kids, I, he did it more than my mom did. You know, as a child, you were jealous because you wanted to be the only ones. And every time he was away, you felt like they were taking time from you and they were taking time from your mom. So you just look at her and know that she didn't feel happy sharing her husband.
It was very much a Sarahule tradition that women didn't get educated. Me and my sister, we were the first girls in our family to be enrolled in school. My mom felt like it was very, very important, even though my dad was against it. She was very strict, but with me, she was lenient. Like when I come home and say, I would never marry a guy that has another wife. I would never let my husband hit me. She just used to sit and laugh. <laughs> when I was eight years old, my marriage was arranged to a guy that lived in New York. My bride price was paid. I was ineligible to live with him because I was still very, very young. And when I hit puberty, that was when I was going to be eligible to get married. As a Sarahule girl, it's not abnormal for us to have our marriages arranged when we are very, very young. If you're actually over 18 and you don't have a husband, people think that you're expired in some kind of way, so that's a problem. When I was about 13, my mom found out that she had breast cancer. I remember being in a hospital with her when the doctors told her that she only had a few months. She looked at me and said, don't listen, they're not God, that's not going to happen, they're lying. It was hard to let go because we were very close. Gamsara is the most conservative, hardline, and hostile place that you can go and talk about FGM. It's a village that has 100% of women cut. It's where my family is from. This is Gambisara. When I was young, I would spend the whole summer there going to the farms. Asalaamu Alaikum. I haven't been back since my mother passed away. The whole village came out. It blew me away because I wasn't expecting that and knowing that I came here to discuss FGM. This was my mom's room. That was the last place that I saw my mom alive. The last place that I heard her laugh. No, I'm not going to be a kid. 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 Anyway, <laughs>
This was the first time there was ever an open debate about FGM. And it's really, really amazing. I want to cook a girino for women like her, they've never seen an uncut woman. They don't know any other way. The lack of basic health care is a huge contributor to the issue of FGM. You know, Gamasara doesn't even have a good hospital. We live in a society where in women are made to believe that you know you have to bow down to your man. Men tell women we want our daughters cut and they cut them. My aunt, my sisters told me that this is how we lived. I shouldn't have been taught to accept those kind of things. When I was 15, I was brought to America by my dad to get married to the guy that I was promised to. He was in his 40s. I arrived in New York on Christmas Day my husband was at the airport to pick me up. He wanted to like touch me and hug me and I didn't want him touching me and I kept hitting him. As soon as I get to my aunt and uncle's house, there was people, there was cooking, there was everything. And I knew that that was it. The night of the marriage, they had like an older woman kind of like a sex advisor that would tell you about what to do. You know, this is the position to make it more comfortable, or this is the products that you can use to kind of lessen the pain. This woman actually baits you. She rubbed perfume lotion all over me. They dressed me. They made me wear white lingerie. They made me wear these waist beads. 